Module 3 – Data Collection, Sources and Methods Module 3 provides guidance on sources and methods for data collection to enable states' parties to fulfil their obligation to provide an annual report on authorizations and or actual arms exports and imports in accordance with Article 13, Paragraph 3 of the Arms Trade Treaty. This module provides examples of documents and records that can be utilised to prepare an ATT annual report. These materials can also be used to submit an annual report to the United Nations Register of Conventional Arms, known as simply the UN Register. The module notes some of the tools and processes that have been utilised by states to facilitate the completion of annual reports on arms exports and imports and overcome technical and administrative challenges for reporting. The module has three aims. To understand the different types of data to be collected and reported, to introduce and understand the different approaches for data collection and to learn about the different challenges and solutions for reporting. This module draws upon several potential sources of guidance for helping states prepare an annual report on arms exports and imports. The first source is the Arms Trade Treaty text itself. Article 12 on record keeping and Article 13 on reporting provide some guidance for the preparation of annual reports. Article 12, paragraph 1 of the ATT obliges states' parties to maintain national records pursuant to its national laws and regulations of its issuance of export authorizations or its actual exports of the conventional arms covered under Article 2, paragraph 1. Article 12, paragraph 2 encourages states' parties to maintain records of conventional arms covered under Article 2, paragraph 1 that are imported or authorised to transit or transship territory under its jurisdiction. Article 12 also provides guidance on the potential contents of such records for authorisations and or actual transfers, including quantity, value, model and or type, details of exporting states, importing states, transit and transshipment states, and end users. Article 13, paragraph 3 of the ATT indicates that annual reports on imports and exports of conventional arms may contain the same information submitted by the state party to relevant United Nations frameworks, including the UN Register. The second source of guidance for this module is the UN Register. Annex 4 of the 2016 report of the Group of Governmental Experts on the continuing operation of the UN Register and its further development provides some key principles on points of contact that are relevant for the development of reporting processes. The Annex recommends the creation of a national procedures document to help ensure a stable and robust national process for preparing an annual report on arms exports and imports. Such procedures could include the following elements. Identify the different arms transfer reports to be prepared. A clear explanation of the contents and requirements for each report. Assign reporting tasks to specific authorities and positions. Establish deadlines in the process of preparing reports and a mechanism for reminding relevant information providers. A clearly defined collection process for providing information periodically or on an ongoing basis to the individual or individuals responsible for preparing and submitting the national reports. A coordinated collection process that ensures that when the same information is needed for several reports it is collected only once. This saves time and resources and ensures consistency between reports and indicate if the data submitted is based on authorizations or actual transfers. The Annex draws upon the Wassenaar Arrangements elements for the effective fulfilment of national reporting requirements, which was adopted at the December 2015 plenary meeting. The key recommendation of the Wassenaar Arrangement Guidance is to establish and maintain, if appropriate, by national legislation or governmental decision, a procedures document that contains the key elements outlined in the Annex to the 2016 Group of Governmental Experts Report. The Wassenaar Arrangement Guidance also recommends that Technical experts who can determine which goods or technology are to be included in the report are involved in its preparation. 
A mechanism is established for classifying applications for authorizations in such a way that information that is to be reported can be easily retrieved. A repository for data is established. Sufficient staff are trained to ensure that reporting is not hindered by temporary absence or loss of personnel responsible for fulfilling reporting obligations. Other useful sources of information for establishing reporting processes include the International Small Arms Control Standard or ISACS Module 320 on National Controls over the International Transfer of Small Arms and Light Weapons, which is available from the website of the United Nations Coordinating Action on Small Arms or CASA, the chapter on record keeping in Weapons and International Law, the Arms Trade Treaty, edited by Claire de Silva and Brian Wood and published in 2015 by Larcier Press, the Southeastern and Eastern Europe Clearinghouse for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons, or CSAC, which has developed several tools to support reporting on arms transfers by Western Balkan states. What are the main sources of information that states can use for the compilation of their ATT annual report? The ATT does not explicitly identify the types of documents that are to be used as sources of information for records and reporting. However, the International Small Arms Control Standard, or ISACS, module for international transfers provides some guidance on the types of documents and information that could be useful for states' parties to maintain in order to fulfil their ATT obligations, optional provisions and additional good practices on record-keeping and reporting. Three documents are identified as sources of information that states could collate to provide information on export authorizations for their ATT annual report. First, an export authorization, a license or permit. Second, an import authorization. And third, end user documentation, that is, an end user certificate or end user statement. If this documentation contains the recommended elements, then a state party will have the required information for providing information on export authorizations in its ATT annual report. Three sources of information can be collated by states to provide information on actual exports for their ATT annual report. First, information provided by National Customs on conventional arms that have passed through designated customs points of exit. Second, information provided by entities that have been authorised to export conventional arms. And third, a delivery verification certificate or comparable document. If this documentation contains the recommended elements, then a state party will have the required information for providing information on actual exports in its ATT annual report. Two documents can be used as sources of information that a state could collate to provide information on import authorizations for its ATT annual report. First, an import authorization, and second, end user documentation. If this documentation contains the recommended elements, then a state party will have the required information for providing information on import authorizations in its ATT annual report. Three sources of information could be collated by states to provide information on actual imports for their ATT annual report. First, information provided by National Customs on conventional arms that have passed through designated customs points of entry. Second, information provided by entities that have been authorised to import conventional arms, commercial entities and also government end-users. And Third, a delivery verification certificate or comparable document. If this documentation contains the recommended elements, then a state party will have the required information for providing information on actual imports in its ATT annual report. Who is responsible for collecting and collating information for reporting? ATT BAP research and analysis of completed ATT BAP surveys reveal that the top five ministries that lead processes for implementing arms transfer controls are the ministries of Economy or Commerce, Defence, Interior, Foreign Affairs and Justice or National Police. Other common government agencies include customs agencies under the Ministry of Finance, National Security Agencies and specially created transfer control agencies in some states.
These ministries and agencies also maintain relevant records for the preparation of an annual report on exports and imports. In some states, the national agency or ministry charged with issuing authorizations is responsible for maintaining the records of these decisions and actual exports and imports. In many cases, this responsibility falls on more than one agency or ministry. For example, the Ministry of Defence could be responsible for authorizations for exports and imports of military list items, while the Ministry of the Interior could be responsible for authorizations for exports and imports of civilian firearms. A key mechanism for an effective reporting process is to ensure that government end-users and commercial entities are obligated to keep records and report regularly to the relevant national authority or authorities on authorizations and actual transfers. Provisions could be included in national legislation or administrative regulations that require reporting by such entities to take place in advance of the deadline for the annual report on arms exports and imports to the ATT Secretariat. Customs agencies can also maintain records on exports and imports of conventional arms. One of the main challenges in utilising customs data for maintaining records on actual arms imports and exports is that customs data are classified according to the Harmonised Commodity Description and Coding Systems, or HS, or the Standard International Trade Classification, or SITC, codes, and not the categories described in national control lists. Which methods and tools can be used for sharing information to put a report together? In many states, inter-ministry and or inter-agency cooperation is necessary to gather all relevant information in order to compile an annual report on arms exports and imports. The Wassenaar Arrangement and the 2016 Group of Governmental Experts on the UN Register provide some guidance on good practices for fulfilling reporting commitments. Three components can be identified for establishing an effective process to enable reporting on arms exports and imports. First, a database or single template that can be used as the basis for developing and maintaining a repository of information on authorizations and or actual exports and imports. Second, clear national guidelines for the division of competences in record keeping and reporting and Third, the development of a national submission calendar to establish timeframes for when participating ministries and agencies should provide relevant information from their records in preparation for the submission of an annual ATT report by the 31st of May each year. The development and maintenance of a central data repository may be the most effective means for data collection, collation and reporting. The central collection point for the relevant data should also be responsible for the preparation of the annual report. Ensuring that ATT obligations are understood and that the central collection point has the authority to call upon different agencies and ministries to provide information in a timely manner is also critical. To assist in this effort, provisions on record-keeping and collection of information for use in ATT annual reports can benefit from an explicit provision in national legislation or regulations. The centralised approach can be challenging. An alternative approach is for states to develop a standardised template under which relevant ministries or agencies are responsible for completing the appropriate sections. This process has the benefit of establishing clear national guidelines on the division of labour and responsibility with regard to record-keeping and data collection.